This is a deep ocean research locate recovery of a airplane crash. That's the deep submersible, the Bathyscaph Trieste, which is capable of 35,000 feet deep dives. It is a Bathyscaph, so it has considerable lifting capability and its buoyancy is provided by large tanks of aviation gasoline. However, it requires a minimum of 24 hours service between each dive. And of course, the difficulty is the locate part of the search and recovery. In this case, we're putting overboard 55 gallon drums that are precisely spaced along a path that was located by navigation on land and off a satellite. The drums are numbered and going down on a straight line. So when the bathyscaph or submersible comes across these drums on the ocean bottom, we will know where the submersible is at that time and be able to direct them to certain areas of search. Because the bathyscaph is filled with high octane aviation gasoline, it's necessary that it is towed behind the mothership and the commute between the mothership and the bathyscaph is done by this little boat. Bathyscaph carries three people, generally two to operate it, one is an observer. Here we're searching for the bathyscaph to come back up after a dive. Dives normally last for 24 hours before you use up your air in the bathyscaph and maneuverability by letting go of your ballast from time to time. This is aboard the mothership. This is the conning tower, shall we say, where the sonar is located and the communications with the bathyscaph, which is by sonar radio. This is another type of deep submersible. This is the sea cliff. It's not a bathyscaph. It is a deep submersible. It uses syntactic foam for its buoyancy. And it has very limited lifting capability, however. Excellent maneuverability. 35 and 70 millimeter cameras and arms with claws in the end of it. Can pick up very small objects. Can remove bolts and things of that nature. Has three portholes. Again, three crew members, two to operate, one as an observer. Conning tower on the top is simply so that when you open the hatch and they see, you don't flood the bathyscaph and sink. Conning tower fills with seawater when the thing submerge, submerges. The three people get in, mothership pulls away, and the deep submersible uh, slowly sinks. Again, it takes about six hours or so per thousand feet to get down. Ten or twelve hours on the ocean bottom for search, locate. Very little recovery capability, but the submersible by, by itself. And then the recovery operation of the submersible, which is very critical because we're trying to bring it aboard the mothership with a derrick and crane. Difficulty here is to hook up the three hooks on that crane and uh, in a swinging, as the crane swings in a sea. And then, of course, we have to get the three men out of there as number one priority. Here the man's trying to make a hook one at a time, watching out for his head with the other hooks. Very dangerous operation. Increases in danger as the sea increases. And indeed, when seas got worse than this, uh, it was not possible to make a dive in recovery. Once having hooked the derrick, the vertical load is then put to partially lift the submersible to take the rock off of it to get it conning tower definitely out of harm's way of the water flooding it. And then now you can get the three crew members out of it and into a life raft and get them over to the mothership.
There it is starting to come out of the water. Here the crew members are coming out. The Zodiac in the distance, which is a rubber raft with a high power motor, will come in and pick up the crew members, get them aboard the mothership, and then we can make the recovery of the submersible itself on board the fantail of the mothership. In this case, we were using a oil derrick service ship, the Maxine D, based out of Houston, as a mothership. Very difficult operation to bring it aboard because of the rock in the sea. And if this thing starts swinging, it could harm the personnel. So they put a taut rope going out to sea away from the ship by virtue of the Zodiac, a vertical lift, and then the Maxine D gets underway to get rid of the fore and aft pitch. And then 20 people are carefully guiding this thing aboard. On the ocean floor, the 70 millimeters and 35 millimeter cameras are able to take these kind of pictures. This was taken about 7,000 feet down. Very difficult because of the difficulty in lighting it and illuminating it, but believe it or not, in the middle right-hand side is the front end of an engine. That's a compressor section starting at about the fourth stage of the low pressure compressor. And this is a recovery. It's done with syntactic flow and flotation devices and a basket full of parts. But it is one method of lifting small parts. Two or three hundred pounds of parts can be lifted by putting them in a basket on the ocean floor using syntactic float devices to raise the basket. It takes about eight hours for the basket to reach the surface. Um, about a thousand feet an hour.